Deadline to submit signatures on a petition to recall Governor Gavin Newsom is quickly approaching, and organizers believe that they have the numbers on their side. Yeah, the recall Newsom campaign says it's gathered more than 1.8 million signatures. 1.5 million are needed to trigger a recall, but those signatures still need to be verified by the Secretary of State's office. Now to the top counties in our region with the most signatures, according to the California Secretary of State's office. More than 27,000 people in Sacramento County have signed the petition. It makes sense because it's the most populous county, so the most there. El Dorado County has gathered 8,000. Placer has more than 6,000. And as the effort to recall Newsom gains momentum, we're seeing him touring many vaccination sites across the state. Pretty similar to how we saw former Governor Gray Davis touring power plants during the energy crisis before he was eventually recalled. So with that, let's bring in CBS 13 political analyst Gary Dietrich. Gary, good to see you as always. Uh, do you think it seems like Newsom is on a bit of a COVID campaign right now? Well, I think it's clear now. Most of us believe, I think the governor's people now realize it's almost certain that this is going to qualify. I mean, the amount of signatures that have been turned in, you guys have been talking about that right now, look like they're going to put them over the top. So therefore, we're going to have a recall election. And it's never too early to campaign when your political life is at stake. And keep in mind, this recall has really been driven by COVID, by school issues, business issues, and testing slash vaccination. That is getting them out. So it isn't really a surprise, I guess you could say, the governor now touring vaccination sites and down the road, could we see that with schools and businesses? Quite probably. Yeah, you're right. So Governor Newsom isn't the only governor in the hot seat, as you know, Gary. It's kind of in a different basket here, but here Governor Andrew Cuomo is under federal investigation, accused of covering up the number of COVID deaths in nursing homes in a story that just keeps getting bigger by the day. So why are we seeing so much pushback against some leaders in blue states? I mean, obviously, the Cuomo thing, as I said, is a, you know, has potential criminal element, but uh, what's your take on that? Well, I think, Tony, it really boils down to one simple thing, and that is these blue state governors, most notably Cuomo and Newsom, were some of the leaders in really locking their states down. And so they've been the ones really under the gun and under the microscope when it comes to how that has gone. And especially with the two most populous states in the country, perhaps no surprise that New York and California getting the most scrutiny. Before we let you go, Gary, we want to talk about California AG Javier Becerra and his confirmation hearing to become President Biden's Secretary of Health. Uh, the hearing wrapped up yesterday. What were some of the takeaways for you? Well, it was important to note that on the abortion issue, Becerra faced some heat, but really most notably was over the Affordable Care Act and over so-called single-payer health care. Now, you even had in the room Bernie Sanders, the champion of that, who actually didn't press Becerra on whether you want to go to Med Medicare for all, the single-payer system, but Republicans really hammered him on that, and he basically took a line following the president's lead, saying, as the president said during the campaign, we're going to make changes to the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. He didn't say anything about pushing towards a universal care system, which he did in California. And one more note on Newsom. If there is a recall election that night for the watch party, I'm guessing he won't have it at the French Laundry. That's probably a really good idea, and I think you're astute to note that, Tony. <laughs> Gary, thank you, as always.